Most men, even in this comparatively free country, through mere ignorance and mistake, are so occupied with the factitious cares and superfluously coarse labors of life that its finer fruits cannot be plucked by them.
Henry, are you okay? July 1845. Dear Henry, you've told me yourself that it is difficult to begin anything without borrowing, and I know that you can use an axe, so I've left one for you in my front yard by the chopping stump. Do come by any time to fetch it. Perhaps we can discuss the new lecture I am working on while you are here. Your friend, Ralph Waldo Emerson. The grand necessity, then, for our bodies is to keep warm, to keep the vital heat in us. I learned that it would cost incredibly little trouble to obtain one's necessary food, even in this latitude, that a man may use as simple a diet as the animals, and yet retain health and strength. All sound heard at the greatest possible distance produces one and the same effect, the vibration of the universal lyre, just as the intervening atmosphere makes a distant ridge of the earth interesting to our eyes by the azure tint it imparts to it. Every day or two I stroll to the village to hear some of the gossip which is incessantly going on there, circulating either from mouth to mouth or from newspaper to newspaper, and which, taken in homeopathic doses, was really as refreshing in its way as the rustle of leaves and the peeping of frogs.